Matthew 22. Matthew 22. I'm going to read verses 1 through 14. Um, it's the parable of the wedding banquet and just watch what happens at the end of this thing You've never heard it like this. I promise you you have never heard it like this I've been walking 40 years half of it with God. I've never heard it like this. No one's ever explained it I've never seen it. I woke up with it in a dream I want to share it with you now because God is doing something amazing in this earth right now And he has got purpose and plans to play out yet He ain't done with us and I promise you he got a blanket prepared and those seats are meant to be filled by those exact people Whose their names are on Watch what I'm talking about. Jesus spoke to them again in a parable saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened cattle have been butchered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his field, another to his business. The rest seized the servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding banquet is ready. But those I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guest, he noticed a man who was not wearing wedding clothes. He asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes, friend? The man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. Ah. So I have a dream of a huge banquet, right? And it's empty. There's seats, there's settings, there's names, but it's empty. It's all ready to go, but it's empty. And I wake up feeling like bad for it because the guest didn't show up. God immediately rebukes me and said, it ain't the guest that didn't show up, son. You getting it wrong. Because I'm thinking every time I've been to a wedding here lately, I've been on this side of the, the banquet hall, right? I've been the guest at it, watching what? The bridal party at their table eating, and I'm on the guest table eating. And when I saw this banquet in my dream, I'm viewing it as a guest table. It ain't no guest table, people. It's the wedding party table that he's talking about. Don't you understand? You ain't no guest to God. You the bride. Ah, that's what I'm talking about, identity. My wife became a bride when she said, I do to me. And that's what God is trying to get us to. He ain't wanting no guests. He got plenty of lookers. He's trying to get those ones who will accept the name of Jesus, who will become the bride of Christ. That's what he's showing me. So when I saw an empty table, it wasn't just the guests not showing up. It was the brides running. Like the brides have ran. You know what I'm saying? And those of us who will not relent to Jesus, Guys, it's a double slap in the face because the table's already set. Your name is already there. And he wants to bestow everything that he has upon you. His authority, his name, his love, his grace, his kingdom. And your name sat there. And the dinner's already prepared. And you are meant to be there. And yet, we aren't willing to take the name. So I transitioned from not just praying for revival for those who would come and see, but for those who would come and take part in, who would be part of the ceremony. Not just um, spectators, but I'm talking view, um, brides. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I know it's stupid, but we aren't supposed to be always the bridesmaid, never the bride. You know what I'm talking about? Like, we're supposed to be the bride. He's who he came for. And like, I was willing to give everything for my wife. Jesus literally was willing to give everything to us. And he proved it to us on that cross. Like when I, three months later, when I gave my wife a ring, I got down on a knee and asked her to marry me. Our savior got down off a cross and did the same thing. Don't think he didn't do anything less than that. He got down off a cross and he victoriously rose to the right hand of God the Father. He is the son in this. And the father's got everything prepared. All he needs is his wife to show up. Who's the wife? Those that would take the name. My wife had to say I do before she got the name. And that is what we got to do as well.